This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Tabletop Deathmatch is our independent game design contest. Tabletop Deathmatch is a contest run by Cards Against Humanity where we send independent games to judges and they will pick a winner and that winner will have their first print paid for by Cards Against Humanity. It's not Are you filming my tired body? 9 p.m. Take a picture, it lasts longer. At this year's Deathmatch, I'm hoping to see contestants who are really passionate about their game and who are able to look us in the eye and tell us why their game is special and why their game is excellent. This game sounds adorable and I really want to play it. It's called The Siblings Trouble. It's a fast-paced, cooperative, card-driven role-playing game and I love the inspiration. It was inspired by finding the mysterious places in your backyard. Mm -hmm. I really want to play this. The theme is so cool. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm Kim Robinson, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. My name's Ed Barroff. And the name of our game is The Siblings Trouble. Basically the idea behind The Siblings Trouble is take the fun of narrative storytelling play like role playing style gaming, but make it something digestible and fun that you can just do with your friends and family like, like casually and quick. It's an action adventure kind of card game where you take on the role of one of the four siblings, mischief, mayhem, adventure, or danger. So at the beginning of the game, each player selects their character, and you stack your adventure deck. You start from the bottom up, and you put an epic treasure card, a boss card, which is the big baddie in each of the locations, and then you layer path cards and location cards in a pattern so that you have a couple things that you see along the way, and then you encounter something, whether that's bad or good. Each person, when they take their turn, adds to the flavor of the adventure so that every single time you play, it's different. Every time you have different people playing, it just adds to the richness of the experience. So, interestingly, the siblings' trouble used to be the brothers' trouble. And um, I have two boys, Evan and Ethan, uh, and Ethan's middle name is Danger and Evan's middle name is Adventure. Kim and I had been working together uh, in, in video games for a really long time, but never had an opportunity to do something together. We were just talking about it, and it seemed like we could really do something fun around this idea of going on this adventure with, you know, your younger self or as yourself. It's got a real nostalgic feel to it also. Like when I think about when I was a kid, it was a like precious time to be away from your parents. You really grew up during those moments. I, I absolutely love working on board and card games and, and, and developing in the, in the physical medium. It is awesome. Being able to just work on something small with a few people where everyone's heavily involved and engaged in the product. If I could make a living at it, I would just make card games and board games. Ed actually has another game that's called Liftoff, which is a board game he submitted. I thought, you know, it would really be cool to submit our game too. And we talked about it and decided we could be ready in time. And honestly, I never ever thought I'd be here and I'm sure I'm not the only person that has said that. You know, it'd be fabulous to win and, and, and help fund it and all that stuff, but just the opportunity to show it and talk about it and have it judged, like that's a really interesting and wonderful experience. Like we're, we're gonna make the game and we're gonna figure out how to get it done and, and get it published or do it on our own or do a Kickstarter. I mean, there's all that piece of it, but just to sort of get in as a finalist was awesome, and I think, I mean, winning would be super awesome, but I don't think either of us, Kim or I, come here with the objective of like, we need to win this. It's, it's about the experience for both of us, I think. Ed and I have known each other for so long, but we've never met. I mean, I've never met her in person. Ed and I are gonna meet at Gen Con, and I'm very excited about it. He's, you know, become a great friend, and it's just gonna be a fun experience to actually be in the same room with someone that you've worked with for so long. Um, I never really got to shake hands, so I'm looking very much forward to it.
Hey, <laughs> oh, can't believe it. So yeah. great to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you, you are short. So, so are you. I know. Short. Yeah. Well, you want to see our... Uh, yeah, let's do it. It's a good, you guys it's a see? good presentation. How did you get to fit so well? <laughs> she just got really This lucky. is a cigar box, it's right? It's like my sister had it. I was going to design the package, and I was out of time. And so she had it. She said, what, is this going to fit? And it fit perfectly. Awesome. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Who'd have thought that seven or eight years ago we ended up in yeah. Indianapolis? <laughs> yeah, this wasn't on. This wasn't even on the horizon, right? No. I'm just gonna keep like rotating it in my hands. You maybe we'll even play it. We are gonna have to. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, my name's Ed Barra. And I'm Kim Robinson. And this is the Siblings Trouble. It's two to four player cooperative um, storytelling game driven by cards, right? So gonna everything that happens in the game and everything you do is role playing. At the start of the siblings trouble, each player chooses a character from among the siblings. Mischief, mayhem, adventure, and danger. Each has their own unique ability and trouble die. Players reveal the map as you go along, taking turns flipping up cards from the adventure deck and revealing either path or location cards. Path cards may reveal events that could either help or hinder the siblings, or search cards that require players to roll their search dice. Depending on the result of the search die roll, players may find hidden treasure, fight a monster, or simply end their turn. Location cards will reveal either monsters or traps the siblings must overcome. Each location card has a star value that represents its difficulty. The player that flipped up the location card must roll their trouble die to try and beat the encounter, either by rolling above the star value of the encounter or using their character's special ability if they can. If they are unable to beat the encounter, they may use any of their personal treasures to boost their roll. A player can also call on one of their siblings to assist them by adding their die roll or one of their treasures to the original player's total. If a player or group of players fails to beat an encounter, they are sent home and miss their next turn. If all the players are sent home, the game is over. If the team beats the final boss, they get an epic treasure to take on their next adventure. And so we have mayhem, mischief, uh, adventure, and danger. Why don't you all select whoever you'd like to play as? I love when you kind of open up a board game and you present it to new players, and it doesn't look like your average board game inside, like white dice and black pips. They turn off people that have played other board games, and this, it's all new looking bits inside. It's kind of exciting that way. I want to be mayhem. Danger is my middle name. <laughs> that is really convenient. I really liked the way the game gave you multiple elements every time you had to do storytelling, because it made it easier to come up with a story when I had a slingshot and a goo pile and a bat rather than just a bat. Uh, I'm bringing along this old comic book. The guy in this comic book has awesome psychic powers and I'm dead certain that I can use them too. I just need the comic book to show me how. You may not know this looking at it, but this book I carry with me is actually a book safe. What's inside you don't know. Uh, but I have found that books are pretty boring. Book safes have infinite possibilities and that is why I'm going to bring it along. This would definitely be fun for families, because uh, there is a kid appeal. I also feel like it's nostalgic because of the Goonies, and if you had a group of role players that were first getting together, you could totally bring this out and say, hey, remember the Goonies? Let's pretend like we're them. Okay. I was walking through the forest with all of you, of course, and you were all talking very loud, uh, but I was following this little stream, and I was wondering where it was coming from, and it happened to be the entrance of this cave, which was hidden behind dense foliage. Somebody had built some sort of fort with branches. I just tore it down. And it revealed this wonderful cave we should all go into. That's why caves exist, right? Right. To be entered? Yes. I really liked the art. I really liked the experience and all of the specific details and fun things you encountered in the game. So we have torn down the fort that may have been trying to keep us out of the cave. We don't care going anyway. Oh no. Does so something terrible happen? Uh, and as as we enter, I'm, I am mayhem, as you know, and I, I've sort of seen that all of these branches are around as we enter. The, 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 the foliage is getting less dense, but I, I'm going to pull on one because maybe there's like a, a hidden door or something like that. Uh, and when I pull on it, uh, a bunch of uh, 
trees, rocks, uh, just collapse on my head and I get a mortal wound. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, just immediately. I'm out. I mean, it makes sense to me that Mayhem got hurt first. Yeah. I didn't read the rules, but it feels like they might be a little bit complicated, and I'm a little worried that the difficulty could get a little high just depending on your rolls. So, the first thing you'll do is roll. Okay. So, you okay. describe you've come across this place. This place, okay. If you roll that one, yeah. then you do this. Just do it as normal. Okay. So I got that. that so okay. You're going to. Describe this place to everybody right. that you've come across, and then um, this is what happens. I was a little concerned about the way the game tried to tread a middle road between pure storytelling and mechanically assisted role play. Um, sometimes those things are in conflict, and usually games succeed at one end or the other. The middle is a lot harder. It's amazing. Like the inside of the cave is covered in frosting. Guys, you've got to taste the walls of this cave, and I start licking the walls of the cave. I love candy. Do you think it's danger candy, though? I don't know, but it's awesome. When you're doing a role-playing game, it's always good to have a really good game master. And I think if you brought too many new people that hadn't really done a role-playing game, even a light role-playing game, to something like this, there might be no, like, safety net to help pull the story back on track. I bring one of the candied wall bricks along with it, <laughs> and I best. wrap it in my cape. Oh, no. I am gonna sneak licks of that candy wall oh, break. Not a problem. When you're not looking. <laughs> it's a little I'm gritty. gonna try to see if the stuff that fell on me is also candy. Oh, what a good idea. I take a lick of the bloody wounds. <laughs> This doesn't taste like candy. No, this is kind of gross. <laughs> um, so I really enjoyed having an opportunity to role play in the game. It was a lot of fun and it was easy for me to sort of role play with the numbers and stuff because I'm used to that playing D&D and stuff. I am concerned that the game, that other players had an issue focusing on adding up their numbers and trying to be victorious and that this pulled them away from telling stories with the objects, which is the point of the game. Bursting out of the slime cave is an ugly, mean troll! Oh, God! However, as he bursts up from the slime, he totally knocks down a slimy stalagmite, and sun streams through the roof right into his eyes, and the troll's like, ah, I don't like sun, I only like dark and slime. But now he's really angry, so he punches me in the face. I duck. Um, Tell the duck. A four, I need a little help, though. I really enjoyed that each encounter really encouraged us all to spend our treasure cards. There's like, not gonna keep them. It felt like we were really struggling to get past each each one of the monsters. You wanna help out, Mischief? You know, I, I felt I very yeah. much. Maybe somebody else wants to help. You know, all right, I'll you do it. All the goodies. All right. Don't be greedy. Oh, I get it, the treasure. I love the treasure. I found a 1928 penny. It's tin. <laughs> tin penny? A tin penny. I don't want that. He got a three. Four, three is seven. He's got a six. Yeah. So I guess he trips over you as you pick up the mean penny and he falls into the slime. And the sun gnarls up his back. And he shrieks and runs away. Woohoo! Ooh, I get an epic treasure. That one. Excellent. Family when pack. we get home, there's a beautiful Labrador retriever waiting oh, for I us. I always wanted a Labrador retriever. That's all we ever wanted. That's why we ran away today. Is he from the 70s? <laughs> I really enjoyed playing The Siblings Trouble. It seems like a very fun family game. I don't have kids yet, but when I do, this is the sort of thing I would love to play with them before, you know, by the time they're six or seven, sitting them down to play some Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so one of the neat things is my son's middle name, Ethan's middle name is is danger and Evan's middle name is adventure. The six-year-old Ethan can read and he's like, oh, that's me, I'm danger. And he pulled the danger and he's like, oh, Evan, here, here, this is you. We need, we need a little bit of, a little bit of oomph in the game. I think that the mechanics are actually just a little bit too light. Narrative fiction has rules. I think that there's something here that could be really, really big for a lot of different gamers.